While anyone can say that a certain lure catches more fish. I guess I get to take this one since you've decided to take a little lunch yeah, break. I'll, huh? just, I'll <laughs> just wait till you get the board in here. Not everyone can say that they've been fortunate enough to test that lure before it came out. <laughs> I guess I guess you're not the only one that was hungry, right? Right. <laughs> Hop right up on that back deck and I'll Grab swing this board. swing this board right to you. And better yet, that they made sure to test it in every way possible. A dream come true for a professional tournament angler like Keith Cavallez, who stakes his living on catching walleyes any way he can. And he's now that you got it off, it's still bending pretty good. <laughs> oh, there he is. There oh, is. that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. He's got his pink meal right in his lips. Get him, Randy, quick, get him. There you go. <laughs> get him in here. Get him in here. We don't need him in the water. <laughs> that's a good one there. Boy, they aren't biting just, they aren't just hammering that bait, they're just barely getting it in their mouth, but little triple grips held oh, on barely good. Barely gets the job done. Crankbaits may generally appear simpler than, say, spinner rigs in their outward appearance. They're not real heavy. I mean, we are a little bit post-spawn here, 50 degree, 52 degree water. So we're post-spawn, but that's definitely a female. But the sometimes understated complexity of their simple design and hopeful success stands largely on mimicking a natural action. So one of the cool parts about being a professional angler is that a lot of times I get to design not only equipment, but lures. And for this trip, what I wanted to do was test a new stick bait that we're working on. Now the interesting thing about a stick bait is, uh, unlike the, like the flicker shads that we designed a few years ago where we worried a lot about top to bottom roll, with longer baits like this, because the bait fish that they're mimicking is longer, those fish actually swim more with a snaky action. So not only do we got to worry about the roll, but we got to worry about this side to side or snaky action. So we literally have to test to see which bait is going to be the best action. The guys at the lab, you know, they're writing different numbers on here, six slow, eight slow, 11 fast. I've got about eight or nine different actions out here. And what we're doing is letting the walleyes do the testing for us. So Lake Erie is a great place to do that because there's lots of walleyes. We're running lines out here with different kind of actions. We're running some controllers out here. What we're trying to do is figure out the best stick bait we can to catch a lot of walleyes for you. Inside board there. Yep, I see it. Grab it. Oy. How's she feel? She feels like a fish. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Could feel like a lot worse thing, I guess. Now, yeah, let me give it a little feel here. It's definitely a fish. <laughs> it don't feel too bad. It'll certainly be worth getting the net for, I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. A little bit dingy water here. I saw a little bit of him. There he is. He's got the old pinky right in his He's mouth. Fat. He's a decent fish. I got him. Nice. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Good fish. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. He kind of T-boned it a little. I think that's why he felt just a hair bigger than he is. Got some of the hooks in his, you know, up where we had up in the front hooks is what he actually bit, and then the back hooks caught him a little bit in the gill, but that makes him feel a little bit heavier than they are. He's not too bad a one, though. A little chunkier than some of the other fish. Get this out of here. There we go. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, he's a really nice fish. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the healthier ones. I mean, he's got yeah, that's a, a nice really fish. nice body shape on him. I mean, just gutty all the way down like that. He's been eating a little bit there. Or she, maybe. Probably a small female. A pretty decent female. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get her back in here to grow up just a little. Whoosh. Fishing Experts, presented by Amsoil. You know, one of the things when it comes to uh, wind and current, or, or pretty much any type of fishing you do, boat control is key on putting more fish in the boat. And this new XI-5 is really pretty impressive. You can actually see here that we're fishing in a river situation, and there's a lot of wind blowing with the current. So we have a lot of factors that are trying to push us away from the good areas right next to these pillars because these walleyes use these pillars as an area to sit and get out of the current. 
This XI-5 has what we call anchor mode, and that's simply pinpoint GPS feature built into the motor that's unbelievably precise. I've set anchor mode on the front corner of this pillar. It almost feels like you're ice fishing when you're using this feature because I literally can be vertical jigging straight under the boat, not having to use my foot on a foot pedal, just basically letting that anchor mode work itself and see that jig on my transducer right below the boat. Now one of the coolest features about the anchor mode is what we call the jog feature. Fish move around. So in a situation like this, I want to be able to cover the pillar. You literally can go in five foot increments, left, right, forward, back. So for instance here, if I want to back up on this pillar, let's say 10 feet, I go one, two, the anchor mode will actually readjust, move us back 10 feet on this pillar, and sit up on that spot, re-anchor, and I can fish that spot there too. So if I want to go to the left, one button there, mode will take us five feet to the left. So very cool. I could actually work my way around this pillar just by simply using the anchor mode, sitting on top of the fish and catching a lot of them in some pretty harsh conditions.